Commuting by bike is great for your health, fantastic for your wallet, brilliant for the planet, and just way more fun than being stuck in a traffic jam, sat on a bus, or just walking. However, I appreciate in winter there may be some many mornings and or evenings where it's the last thing that you want to do. However, with just a few tips, it can still be done. And not only that, it can also still be fun. Is fun, genuinely. This is what I've learned from 10 years of cycling to work in winter. Number one, most importantly of all, you've got to say it is not always grim. Look at this. Some of my best, most memorable and most photogenic rides have come from precisely this in winter. Yeah, times when I otherwise wouldn't have got out the door. Sometimes though, it is just a bit grim. Now in this video, I will cover off both short distance commutes by bike where you don't need or want to change out of your normal clothes. And I'm also gonna cover off longer commutes as well where you might wanna wear cycling specific clothing like this because the requirements for each are slightly different. I wanna start by saying first and foremost that commuting by bike in winter is never as bad as you think it's gonna be. So the number one tip is just to get out there and do it, okay? Even the worst weather can actually be fun in a sort of perverse sort of way. Plus, nobody is gonna give you a pat on the back for driving your car, nor is it gonna leave you with a sense of accomplishment. The challenges of commuting by bike in winter are as follows. Firstly, it is often or always dark, so use lights and wear reflective stuff, simple. It is often cold, so wear warm stuff. It is often wet, so wear waterproofs. And it is sometimes icy, so take care and then wear warm stuff and waterproofs as well. When you put it like that, it sounds and is simple. So the biggest mistake you can make when commuting to work by bike is to overthink it. It's not that bad or that hard. The second most important point is that I don't think you need to have a load of cycling specific kit in order to cycle to work or to school within a city, even in winter, okay? So any old waterproof jacket will keep you dry and any old warm jacket will keep you warm. Plus everyone's got a pair of gloves, right? Those are pretty much all your essentials bar one. The one thing that I think you should invest in is a pair of these waterproof trousers. Oh yes, no one likes wet trousers. Yes, Americans, that is the same as wet pants. Rest of the world, you can stop sniggering now at the mention of wet pants. Now this pair are as cheap as can be. I've had them for two decades now. And yeah, you know what? They actually do keep you dry. They serve a purpose on a 10 minute ride. They keep the worst of the rain off, the worst of the road spray. And when I take them off, when I get to the train station or something, my jeans are definitely drier. However, these ones from Dutch brand Ahu are next level. Okay, so these are cycling specific ones. They are way more waterproof. You can see they've got these jazzy reflective bits on the legs, which is mega fuel visibility. And if you're wondering what these are, these are built-in shoe covers, which uh, I've never seen before, and now I'm wondering how I've existed without them up until this point. Now, jokes aside, okay, if you are in a position to invest in cycling-specific waterproof trousers, then there are definitely advantages to be had, but the basic one is fine. And get, same goes with the jacket, actually. So this is the matching jacket, again, super waterproof, mega warm, highly visible. When worn together, you feel ready for anything, but again, not essentials. So don't let not having proper cycling kit put you off, or at least you can't use it as an excuse, okay? You've been told. Back to those shoe covers. Now I've got to say, wet feet are just like wet trousers, also not nice. Furthermore, shoes can take 
ages to dry, but the solution is a pretty simple one. Just wear a pair of waterproof shoes or boots. Now that could be a pair of hiking boots, could be a pair of waterproof trainers. In this case, rubber boots, AKA my Alaskan sneakers. Oh yeah. Now I'm not entirely sure I'd wear these into the office, Actually, scratch that. I would wear these into the office, but normal people might not. However, if you simply stick a lightweight pair of shoes in your bag, then you can carry them to and from work and change when you get there. Or leave a pair at work. I've had a pair of sneakers, trainers, at work for seven years now, and they've literally never left. I feel like I should take them for a day trip, at the very least. Um, similarly, if it's really cold, a thick, warm pair of boots will also stop you getting cold feet. To a certain extent, it is actually slightly easier on a longer commute when you've decided to put on cycling specific clothing, because you know then that you're going to have a change of clothes when you get to work, either ones that you've left there or that you've got in a bag on your back. In terms of the cycling kit, I rely really heavily on the drying room that we've got at work. So somewhere to hang up my kit so it's almost dry when I come to ride home again. If I didn't have it, I definitely pack a spare pair of tights and an undervest and a jersey on wet days, but I do sympathize if you haven't got that luxury of a drying room. The challenge is there, but it is not insurmountable though. Just whatever you do, make sure that you wrap any clothes or anything like a laptop inside a plastic bag before then sticking it inside your riding bag. Some riding bags are genuinely waterproof, but most aren't. And yet a plastic bag is almost weightless and you're bound to have one or two kicking around. So there we go. No one wants wet spare clothes when you get to work. One thing we've not touched on yet is mud guards or fenders, for those of you that didn't laugh at the wet pants joke. Now, like waterproof trousers slash pants, mud guards are a fantastic investment for city riding. And actually they're not that expensive either. You can get pairs to fit basically any bike, even if you might have to resort to some zip tie action. And they will of course keep you drier in rainy conditions. They will also keep you dry if it's not raining out, but the roads are wet and then also important is that when you think it's completely dry out, they will stop you getting a muddy ass when you accidentally ride through the one puddle that lies on your route to work. On my 20 kilometer commute, they would also be a great investment. Many fellow colleagues at GCN use them for their rides to and from work, but in spite of their inherent practicalities, I do not. I try them, I just don't like the way they make my bike feel. So despite recommending that you use them, I don't. So I'd rather have a fun ride and a wet ass. That sounds really dodgy, I didn't mean it like that. Riding in the dark is definitely daunting, and in winter, you have to do much more of it. It's like your inner cave person is just screaming at you not to go out, so it does take more willpower than usual in order to do it. The practicalities of it, though, I have come to realize are incredibly simple. You need lights, duh. Now, I always have two pairs, right? So one is a fixed beam, the other is flashing. Now, in most countries, I think it's a legal requirement to have a fixed beam light, whereas I feel that flashing lights are better for visibility. Now, it also means by having two pairs that you've always got one as a backup. Plus, because one is constant and the other is flashing, they're likely to run out of batteries at different times. And because we all inevitably end up forgetting to charge our lights at some point or another, that's a nice thing to have as a backup. Now, if you want to wear high-vis, go for it. That is absolutely fine, but I don't. And I know a lot of you will be hating me in the comments for that, and that's absolutely fine too. I've got lights on my bike, and in dark conditions, I'm 100% for reflective fabric, whether that's patches on your clothes, or on your bag, or on your shoes, or your helmet, or your bike, whatever. Good reflective fabric is incredibly visible, and you don't need stacks of it. But what, again, I would absolutely recommend is having reflective fabric on your legs somehow. Now, in cycling kit, that is relatively easy to do. Like, on my tights, the cuff at the ankle is reflective 
Collective. And these overshoes, which you can see, are much loved and very old. They also light up like a flipping Christmas tree in the dark. No matter though whether you are lit up like a Christmas tree with your high-vis reflective fluoro baubles on, I do think it's a really good idea to ride your bike as if you haven't been seen. Now I'm not saying that you should spend your life petrified, but just have it in the back of your mind when you see cars waiting to pull out at junctions or at roundabouts. And I say it because there's some really interesting research conducted here in the UK that found that more people, more cyclists treated in hospital had been wearing high vis at the time of their accident than haven't. Now there could be a lot of different reasons for that, but researchers put forward one which was that perhaps cyclists wearing high vis felt that they were safer and had therefore been riding in a different way. So something to bear in mind. Lastly, riding your bike in winter does take its toll on your equipment. And I think you've got two choices when it comes to this. You can either just ride your bike and maybe oil the chain every now and then when it gets dry and squeaky. And then when something goes wrong, you just take the bike to a local bike shop. You will get hit with a pretty big bill, I'm sure, but we should stress it will still be significantly cheaper than how much you'll spend on servicing your car. And that's absolutely fine. I've got no issue with anyone who wants to treat their bike like a car. I think that's, a, that's totally fine. However, what can help to make your bike run sweeter for longer is just to give it the tiniest little bit of TLC. My number one recommendation is that after a wet ride, you just give it a little wipe down with a rag. Now, I wouldn't bother in dry conditions like this, but like I say, when it's wet, you wipe the tires, the wheels, the frame, and then also the chain and the gears. Just like this, it'll take all of 30 seconds, but it'll make a massive difference. And then, semi-regularly, I would clean the chain with degreaser. And then, finally, also keep an eye on chain wear. So the old school technique of trying to lift the chain off one of the chain rings, if you can expose more than half a tooth, it's time to replace it. Doing so regularly, replacing it regularly I mean, will cost you a few pounds, but it will save you stacks more in the long run because a worn chain wears the rest of the drivetrain out and that then becomes really expensive to replace. To recap, you do not need much, if any, specialist kit in order to carry on commuting through the winter. The only things that I would recommend in addition to items that you already have are waterproof trousers slash pants, mud guards slash fenders, and also lights. Now you will find, I'm sure over time, the more you commute in winter, the more other bits and bobs that you pick up that you find helpful. For me, it's all about waterproof. So waterproof gloves, waterproof jacket, waterproof trousers, waterproof boots. And with that lot, I can carry on riding through the city and enjoy it no matter what the weather because this stuff also helps keep you warm as well and then for my longer commutes it's business as usual with my day-to-day -day cycling kit if you want a few specific tips on riding in the winter wearing cycling kit we'll put a link in the description to another gcn video on that one now do get involved in the comments section i'm sure you have got tips and tricks as well if you've been doing it for a while so please put them down there and also have a read as well because you might find that there are other people commenting and you pick up something you useful too. Remember though, do not let winter get the better of you. Keep getting out there and doing it. It is never as bad as you think. Oh,